Hello, everyone. Hi there. Should I introduce you real quick? Or? <laughs> yeah, what an honor, so, please. Uh, welcome, uh, Ilio, uh, who's also uh, active in the Open Source Design uh, Collective. And uh, yeah, he also has a um, yeah, Open Source Design uh, agency called Ora. Um, and uh, he's going to yeah, present the newest project of them called Identity Hub. So, welcome, Ilio. Thank you. Yeah, I'm Elio. I'm uh, from Albania. I'm a designer at Uni. Uh, Uni is a network measurement censorship tool at the Tor project, so you can use it to see if there's any uh, website blocked in your region or country. I'm also a member of the Open Labs hackerspace in Tirana. And uh, yeah, as, uh, I met Jan and uh, a few other open source designers like two, three years ago, and wow, there exists something like open source design. I thought, like, um, this wouldn't be possible. So um, this is when I joined, and, like, just one year later, I started um, URA, which, uh, which is our, our own agency with open source design values. So the story was that um, two years ago, we, uh, we were organizing a conference in Albania, and... Our designers and media sponsors were asking us, hey, can you send us the logo? Can you send us uh, uh, via email? And it was very tiresome for me personally because I was doing that myself. And I was like exporting uh, SVGs, uh, EPS into JPEGs, PNGs, into all different formats. And uh, it became very tiresome for me. And uh, I, I met a guy who was like having this service. Um, it was called Brandy Stye. And it was proprietary, but um, I really liked it because, like, you could like host uh, your own logos and um, in EPS or PDF and convert it into any size you like, and you basically just give the link to any any of your sponsors or um, whatever designers, and they they can download it and do whatever they want with them. Uh, it was pretty expensive. It was like two hundred forty dollars uh, a year or something, three hundred dollars like that and um, yeah they sponsored us and I was like thinking um, yeah this is very useful but it was proprietary software and like one day I got a newsletter um, half a year ago and they said like hey Brandy Style was uh, being acquired by Brand.ai so we are changing our roadmap and blah 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 okay yeah kind of expected it's proprietary software right and because of this change, I was like thinking we need to have something like that, which is actually open source, and well, it doesn't depend on any acquisition or company um, changing its faith of the software. And funnily enough, just a few months after we decided to build a new open source software to do that, and even more than that, Envision is buying Brandisty and is killing it off. And um, Next month, in March, Brandy C will be dead, and it will not exist anymore. So anyone who uploaded stuff on there, they will not be able to use it. So it was like the best uh, decision we did to actually do an alternative to that. So, um, yeah. Enter uh, Identity Hub, which is um, it's basically solving a similar problem. So what you can do with Identity Hub is that you have a project. For example, uh, in our case, it's Firefox, where uh, we also do, do have an open design community is, uh, in Mozilla. And you can um, basically host all your icons here uh, as SVG files. So you don't have to deal with any different formats. You just upload uh, your SVG files. And Identity Hub is taking care if you want to do conversions, if you want to embed them, it's working as a CDN. So uh, what you can do here is, for example, I go to the Firefox logo, and um, yeah, I want the SVG source file, or I just want to link to the SVG source file. So what you can do here is actually get the embed link and put that every, anywhere you want, and Later on, you can update the exact SVG file here, and it gets updated everywhere. So you can basically do a, a rebranding of your project in the future without uploading new logos and new visual assets everywhere. Of course, it's automated, so you probably need to 
check manually a bit, but it's, it uh, saves you a bit of time as well. And right now, you can also specify if you want the SVG in any PNG resolution. For example, right now we have a 500 pixel uh, PNG resolution. So let's say, for example, 300. You can add that as a size and download it right away. So it just downloaded the same logo for me in a 300 pixel PNG. So this has the advantage that um, if you go to all these media kits on different websites or projects, they give you a huge zip folder with SVG, PNG folders in different formats, different color sets. So this would save it because uh, this would save time for a lot of people because there was a single source of truth and it's SVG. And um, yeah, if you want different flavors, you basically go here instead of just packing it in, into a source file, into a zip package. The advantage of SVG is, is because it's basically HTML and web compat compatible code. So it's also code, which is friendly for developers, but it's also vector, which is, well, what designers use. Going further, on Identity App, um, because we had a nice talk about fonts, we decided also that we should be able to also support fonts. So right now, we only have support with Google fonts. This is going to be expanded with custom fonts later on. But what you can do right now is that you can add a font by simply searching it on from Google Fonts. So if your font is Source Sans, for example, you can select it here and select all the weights you want to use, you wanna, uh, well, your brand represents. And they're being added here automatically. So this is just a preview. So if you want to download the font, it fetches it from Google Fonts, and you can just download it right away here as a source file, TTF or OTF. Same goes also for the colors. Right now, we have a color palette of uh, the new Firefox UX. And um, whatever color you need, you get, the, you get the hex code here. Soon, we're going to have also the CMYK specification if you want to use it for print. And um, yeah, I, I bet it's, uh, it's pretty self-explainable. Uh, you can also customize it in a way of a style guide. So right now, we have different sections here. Uh, a section for every Firefox uh, brand. What you can do is that you can just rearrange them in, uh, if you want to have different, um, different em em emphas emphasizing or different subsections at all. You can also use a description to explain what, how you should be using this logo. Theoretically, you can also add a what not to do section if you, if you uh, care about that as well. In the, in the last section, we also have uh, general images, which is photos. So you can just put any PNG or JPEG as a source file, so to speak. So if you have a team photo and you want to represent your team with that photo, uh, you can put it up here. And in the same way as with SVG, it gets uh, converted automatically to whatever you need. Of course, it's not vector, so you cannot upscale it. But yeah. Um, Identity App is free software. So if you. So I'm typing here in real, real time. So if you want to contribute to it, it's, uh, it's licensed under AGPL. So it's uh, even more hardcore than GPL. Um, <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> so uh, it's written in ReactJS in the front end uh, and Laravel PHP in the back end. But most of the code is, well, in the front end. And the idea behind this it's not like a fancy, hey, you can host your brand over here. But it's mostly like to, to serve as a base for collaboration between designers and developers. How you might say this would be possible is because like SVG is the keyword here, as it's uh, something used by both designers and both developers. We, were, uh, we are planning to do um, 
um, integration with GitHub. So you can basically have your GitHub repo and your Identity App project page sync together. So whatever you update on Identity App will serve as a front end to be updated into your GitHub repo. And ideally also the other way around. So um, designers who are like allergic to Git can use Identity App while, well, people and developers who like mostly CLI kind of stuff, they can use it right from the Git repo. And with the update function of SVGs, you're going to actually uh, version control SVGs. So you can basically visualize how an uh, asset is changing visually for designers. And because SVG is code, actually developers can also see all the differences and change sets in the GitHub repo. So this, um, this is well the vision. It's not reality. Please don't get too, uh, too excited about that. But um, the vision is for developers and designers to collaborate furthermore together because um, we have experienced it as a big problem of a gap on how we collaborate. And we hope that this will serve as a basis for, um, for the collaboration and empathy and getting on the same platform because right now uh, teaching designers how to use Git and GitHub is, is a nice way of, way of working together, but Git is not not really the best visual way of working. So we hope to, to create a bridge. Um, it's funny because URA means bridge in Albanian. A bridge between Git and uh, the visual aspect of design work. So people can work on that. Um, of course, there will be also user management. So you're going to have a project. You can give different access to different people. So um, you don't need to manage it yourself. And also, we'll have web dev integration. I hope uh, towards the end of the year, if you are not helping, if you are helping, it might be sooner, but that depends. And so Jan is working at Nextcloud, so we hope that uh, with Nextcloud we can have a web dev integration, and so you can use your Next, uh, Nextcloud folder to have your assets and get synced in real time. Uh, yeah, that's basically it. Um, we have different issues on the GitHub repo. We have also a roadmap posted. Um, we hope to release the stable version in uh, May. And right now we have a demo online, which you can already use. Just go to the website, you can try it out. If uh, you are losing your assets, disclaimer, it's not your, our fault, it's very alpha yet. So please don't put anything critical on there. And yeah, get involved in the, in the repo and we hope to see more uh, action going on here and to get this going on until the end of the year. Thank you. <laughs> Questions? Yeah. Do you have any business plans? Um, <laughs> OK. Yeah, we do, actually. Um, <laughs> yes, yes. So uh, it was a question if we have a business plan. Uh, we are doing open source design, so we are we are pretty transparent about it. So uh, this software can be self-hosted, so you can host it on your own server. We will be offering, um, well, you can do it already now. It's a bit difficult. We want to do it. Um, we want to make it easier for people to self-host it. But if you, don't wanna, if you don't care about that and you just wanted to make it work, we will be offering a service where you can just subscribe and we will, um, well, you host it on our servers. We'll, there will be a free plan for basic things and... Uh, premium plans for more advanced features, custom domains, and stuff like that. But uh, if you don't want to pay or you are too careful, um, you want to care about your own stuff on your own server, you can just self-host it. Yeah? yeah. Um, uh, for your service, uh, where in the world are your servers uh, um, hosted? That's... Yes, that's not specified yet for the servers we will be using, but for the demo servers, it's in Frankfurt right now. We are, yeah, we didn't want to do it in the US. Anyone? Yeah. Um, I clearly understand the benefits of using SVG as a kind of base format to get the other ones, but what if your organization still wants CMYK images? Do you simply add them as additional images, or do you still deal with it in some other way? 
That's a good question. Actually, we didn't uh, address that yet. Sorry. Um, if there's, how will we be adding CMYK support into IdentiUp in the future if it's SVG was a question? Uh, that's a good question, actually, and we didn't uh, address it yet. But um, I guess in the future, once the priority is there, we, you can just add it manually. Um, so you, you basically have in the uploader, you upload the SVG, and you upload also the CMYK. It, it's kind of problematic if you will do uh, version control, and so you probably need to update it every time. I'm not a developer, so it's kind of hard for me to wrap my head around that, but um, it's definitely not a priority for this year, for now. Yep. Yeah, I was actually actually asking uh, our, our developer about that, and he said like it's too too much of an overkill. I don't know about that. Uh, I'm a UX designer, but we theoret we we wanted to uh, offer all all ways of um, installing installing identity app on your own server. In the beginning, people were saying us, hey, you should make it very difficult for people to install it so they can come to you and pay you. Uh, but we didn't want to do that, so it should be your choice if you want to install it on your own server. Um, Docker image will be coming soon, sooner or later. If you want to help, probably sooner. Any other question? It's uh, it's utilizing MySQL right now, and I don't. I'm not sure. Um, pr I don't think so, but um, yeah, we we should do that. I mean, if we have the manpower. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I know the history of MySQL and MariaDB, so probably yeah, MariaDB might be a better choice. Uh, we we'll be thinking about that. Thanks. Sorry, um, yeah, uh, the uh, question was uh, if uh, some pages were, if all pages were public, right? Yeah. Uh, in, in the next versions, I think by May we'll have also a feature where you can make uh, pages private with password protection or not, or just give access to different users. So um, if you are using it internally in your organization just to share stuff within your team members, you can do that as well in the future. Not right now, but we are planning on that. It's one of the medium priorities right now. Yep. As a user, is interface already available in different languages, or should we contribute to make it happen? It's not, as far as I know. Um, of course, you can contribute. Um, it, it's kind of, the qu sorry, the question was if the user interface is available in different languages, or if like, people can contribute to do that. Uh, it, it's kind of hard for us because we are designers who are trying to develop this and we are trying to translate this vision to developers who are helping us doing that. And sometimes um, it's hard to know what's possible and what not. Uh, but every help is welcome, uh, seriously. Um, we are very responsive on the issues. If you want to do something, uh, even if it's not in our roadmap priority list, blah, 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 uh, you should definitely do that. What support was that? 3D models. Ah, 3D models. The question was if we plan to support 3D models. Uh, it, was, it was in the beginning, it was a great vision we had like uh, to have a marketplace for VR 3D models, which you can like put into your web VR A-frame thing kind of. Uh, but um, I think it's a bit too far-fetched right now. And yeah, we, we probably want to do it if it's get it's, it's, uh, it's getting up to speed, but probably not in this year. Uh, unless someone is doing really much of work and, yeah. But we don't have the manpower right now. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Okay, I guess uh, 
the time's up. Uh, I'll be at the open source design booth also with uh, the other designers. Uh, ask me for stickers and uh, I can show you the demo live if you really want to use it yourself. Um, so yeah, thank you very much.